February 18, 1973. Dear Colonel Harpham, I understand there is a French horn opening in the band in August. If it is agreeable with you, I would like to audition for this position. I realize there are no female members in the Marine Band at this time, but I believe there are a few in some of the other bands, and I know I could handle any and all of the duties required. I have been thinking about this for quite some time, hoping some other woman would be accepted before me so that I would not have to be the first. I am not a woman's lib militant, and I'm not trying to make trouble for you, but I really do want to be in your band, very much. I cannot think of any problems or details that could not be worked out. If you will seriously consider me, I will be in the Washington, D.C. area the week of March 4th through 10th, and would like to audition during that time, preferably March 7th or 8th. If this is not convenient for you or is too early, please give me a different date and time. I will be graduating May 1st, 1973, and would be available any time after that. Very sincerely, Ruth Johnson. On March 7, 1973, Ruth Johnson won the Marine Band French Horn audition at the age of 21. She became the first enlisted female member of the President's Own United States Marine Band. She was joined a few months later by oboist Elizabeth Idle. Together, these women faced some interesting obstacles and challenges with being the first females in an all-male unit. For example, there were no female locker rooms. More importantly, there were no female uniforms, and so they were issued male trousers, male jackets, and covers, and then they had things altered and tailored to make them appropriate for ceremonial and concert settings in which they were placed. The ladies were issued skirts of various lengths and even a seersucker uniform at one point, and that began the evolution for the concert uniforms that we wear so proudly today. While the women continued to make great strides at enlisted levels, we did not have a female officer until 2004. Our assistant director, Captain Michelle Rockers, joined this organization in 1998 as a trumpeter and cornetist. After an extensive audition, Captain Rockers was appointed the assistant director. She was commissioned a first lieutenant in July of 2004 and became the first female assistant director and the first female commissioned officer in the history of the President's Own. I think it's wonderful we're here to celebrate our 40th anniversary of women in the Marine Band. I mean, uh, overall, it's our 250th anniversary uh, this year for the Marine Band, but to specifically hone in on this one unique aspect um, of celebrating when the first woman joined, and that was Ruth Johnson back in 1973. And uh, in today's Marine Band, the atmosphere today, uh, the equality is not an issue. Um, so it's hard to imagine um, maybe some of the difficulties that were inherent to having this transition occur in this organization 40 years ago. So to celebrate this anniversary, it gives us uh, an opportunity to reflect on the, the, the special things those, those individuals did to bring us to where we are today. Uh, those special things like Ruth Johnson writing her letter uh, to Colonel Harpham, appealing to him to just allow me to audition for your organization. Um, making that argument that she's, she's certain that she'll be able to fulfill the mission. Um, and also stating that she really doesn't want to be the first. She has no desire to be the first woman. Um, she just wants a chance. She wish it would have happened sooner. In order for that to have happened, it was the leadership of the band that had to be open to that appeal. And that was Colonel Harpin uh, to even receive that little letter and acknowledge the need uh, for broadening the uh, type of excellence that you could bring to an organization, including being all inclusive. And that was very significant. So today we've reached a point uh, where we have a, uh, not only a, a female assistant director, but a female vocalist. Uh, uh, back in 2005, uh, Gunnery Sergeant Sarah DeLomo uh, joined the band as the first female vocalist. And in many cases, you can argue that our vocalists are more the face of the Marine Band than the, the director is for any particular concert because they are out there reaching the audience. They're speaking to our audience and singing and appealing to our audience. And they develop a, a relationship with our audience. So to have a woman in that role, I think, is a pretty, uh, has been a critical impact. So the Marine Band has come a long way, and uh, we're grateful for the work that has gone before us. Uh, to get us here. We have a lot of work to do still, and the goal is to 
to just keep working hard, continue to mentor to both girls and boys alike so that they don't see a gender divide and that everyone is capable. They are capable of going for the dreams uh, that they desire and there are no limitations. Today, there are 46 women currently serving in the President's Zone. Since 1973, there have been 106 to wear the uniform, and today we make up about 30% of our organization. So to those who came before, to those currently serving, and for those yet to come, happy anniversary, ladies. Here's to 40 years and Semper Fidelis.